those who claim to be Jews but are really of the synagogue of Satan is not referring to the Jewish people as some of you think. It is primarily referring to false Christians who think they are one of the new Jews in New Jerusalem, though they are not, because they are not, they are unworthy due to their hatred of the Jewish people. You're right, telling people your Jesus should be considered one of the worst sins a man could commit if they knew it wasn't true. However, I believe it is true. Therefore, if I'm wrong, then I'm just crazy rather than sinning when I call myself Jesus. The perfect act of contrition can be done by a person if a priest is unavailable for the sacrament of confession as long as the person intends to go to confession at the first opportunity. This rarely used means of receiving forgiveness should be more liberally allowed so a person can once again be in a state of grace without an unnecessary delay caused by the absence of a priest, which is common for many people in certain situations. The mere absence of a priest for the sacrament of confession should not make it any harder for a person to receive forgiveness and go to heaven, providing the person is truly contrite and would have readily gone to confession if it had been available as it is with most other people. People unfortunate enough to be stuck in a situation where the sacrament of confession is not readily available have an extra incentive to avoid sin since it makes it much harder to seek forgiveness. However, this additional struggle to remain in a state of grace should not always be considered a burden, but rather a blessing if it actually causes you to sin less. While in prison, I was only able to go to confession once a month if I was lucky, which means that I had to struggle 12 times as much, time-wise, to avoid sin as the deacon assigned to my prison unit did if I wanted to stay in a state of grace and go to heaven, since he said he went to confession two or three times a week. This always seemed kind of unfair to me, since you would expect his struggle to not sin, to not be nearly as hard as mine in the first place, since he's a deacon, and I'm only supposed to be a layman a layman who couldn't even avoid prison because of his spiritual behavior. The use of free will causes a man to lose his divine sonship because it is disobedience and leads to further disobedience. And God's children by nature are not disobedient. Calling myself Jesus is not a sin if I really am Jesus. Further, it is really you who are the one sinning when you deny me 
if I really am Jesus. God will give you what you want, which is why we are subject to the repercussions of our own choosing. But that still doesn't prove He created us with unlimited free will. I'm almost sure that if we didn't need the ability to choose, for some of the more mundane things of life, God would take that away from us also. Why do you call me good if you don't think I'm God? Since no one is good except God alone. This is another example of Jesus claiming that he and his Father are one. We cannot convert ourselves. As a fallen being, it is impossible for you to have faith without God's grace being involved. Therefore, if you come to Christ, it must have been God who gave you the faith to do so, since you couldn't have done it on your own, which means that it is never really your choice. If God is the one who chose to give you the faith to believe in the first place, irresistible grace For some it is. The doctrine of predestination is in the Bible. The doctrine of free will is not. Remaining faithful versus once saved doctrine. Having real faith only one time, as the once saved doctrine technically only requires, will not save you. Remaining faithful will. How can you have once saved if being saved includes remaining faithful. These things do not occur at the same time. Remaining faithful should also be considered a work. Why do you think the number 66 was picked as the number of books to be in the Protestant Bible. Do you think that it was purely by chance 666? 